Hello, dear friends from around the world. Welcome to a new class with me, Stefan Erler, the founder of the T Masters blog and also the founder of the T Masters.com T Boutique. Today is actually Zhongqiu uh, Jie, Mid Autumn Full Moon Festival here in Taiwan because it is the 15th day of the eight months in the lunar calendar uh, in, in Taiwan. And uh, on this occasion, I thought I'd make um, the, this festival the subject of this tea class so that uh, you better understand uh, about uh, the importance of these uh, festivities in, uh, in Taiwan because uh, culture, of course, uh, has a very deep impact on, um, uh, on tea culture. And uh, by better understanding Chinese culture, we can also better understand uh, tea culture, I believe, and uh, this is also, uh, and it also goes the other way around. Uh, one reason to get interested into, uh, into tea is also because it opens the doors to many other cultures, uh, like uh, the, the Chinese culture. So uh, let's do some uh, back and forth, and um, uh, we'll also have some moon cakes. I will introduce you and explain where they, where they come from, uh, because there are some interesting uh, stories about it. And, um, but before uh, we go in this uh, class, I also wanted to uh, give you some news about um, uh, this week and the tea classes uh, for this uh, fall semester that I'm planning. So what I did this week is that I created a sampler kit of um, six teas. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, you'll get one uh, uh, additional gift if you buy this sampler because it's seventy dollars. So uh, necessarily, we'll, you'll get one additional gift. Plus, uh, for the fir 15 first uh, people who purchase this gift, there's another uh, sam small sample of um, Dongding Oolong from the 1980s, uh, which really smells uh, just perfect and uh, gives uh, you the um, uh, really a very good experience of what an aged Dongding Oolong should smell like. And um, because um, the uh, classes I'm giving every week, uh, you hear the theory from, uh, from coming from my mouth and you see me do uh, perform the brewing of uh, the teas. But uh, if you don't get to drink the teas that I'm um, also uh, uh, drinking and brewing and explaining, if you don't get to drink the, the same leaves, then you actually missing on some, uh, actually on maybe on the uh, most important part of the lesson, and that is uh, the actual taste uh, and the actual sense of the, uh, of the leaves. So um, I made this kit so that in advance uh, with this kit you will get uh, enough teas for several uh, months of lessons in this fall. Uh, I'm planning to do a lot on uh, uh, oolong and especially roasting oolong. I've explained this in this uh, product description and you can also try drink them on your own. You don't have to watch the lessons at the same time but if you do I think this will make your brewing a lot, of, a lot more interactive and um, interesting. So uh, also, why today we don't go yet uh, too, de too deeply in the uh, lessons of this semester is um, because uh, I want to give you time to, um, uh, to order and uh, receive these, uh, these teas. Otherwise, uh, if I start to sp uh, speak and you have not the tea yet, uh, you are missing on some of it. Okay, so one of the first things we can say about um, this Zhongqiu uh, Jie Mid Autumn Festival is that uh, yeah, actually it's not yet autumn in uh, our calendar. Huh? This is uh, always the interesting thing that the diff there's a difference between the Chinese calendar and uh, the astronomical uh, Western calendar. Uh, we you remember uh, the most important. Um, festival in the Chinese calendar uh, is the Chinese New Year, uh, which marks then the first month, beginning of the uh, yeah, first day of the first month. This is Chinese New Year, and for them, this is the start of spring, which is why now uh, the first three months are spring, the next three months uh, are summer, and 
uh, from months 7 to 9 uh, it is autumn but, and now we are in the in the months 8 at the half uh, half time from the 15th day of the 8th month and that's why according to Chinese uh, lunar calendar uh, it is actually uh, the, we are in the middle of autumn and uh, therefore winter is going to start in uh, one and a half uh, lunar months uh, so roughly in uh, in six weeks according to um, to this uh, Chinese lunar calendar that's uh, so we keep this in mind because uh, our months that we are using to describe the um, harvests of uh, uh, of our teas usually is follows the um, uh, Chinese lunar calendar rather than the Western calendar. Uh, since when did we st uh, did the Chinese start to um, uh, celebrate? Uh, uh, this Zhongshuji, this uh, mid-autumn full moon festival. Actually, they, uh, uh, there are records already in the Zhou dynasty, some uh, 3,000 years ago, uh, almost, um, that uh, show that this festival was uh, going on. So, as as soon as uh, this calendar kind of was invented, uh, there were these festivities which makes a lot of sense because um, it is about um, uh, now fall and fall is the month of harvests uh, and therefore a time of plenty where uh, there's enough food to, uh, to eat for everybody so uh, because the, month, the harvest has just been made uh, so it is also a time for uh, uh, for partying and the full moon gives uh, the people also the opportunity when there were no lights, uh, no electricity in those times to have um, a natural uh, light in the evening uh, that would make it more safe to be outside. Uh, of course, if, if there is a full moon, no clouds, actually the, uh, it can be pretty bright and you can see very clearly very far. So you don't, you know, you don't go out at night and are you know, too much uh, afraid because you can see far, far away if there are people uh, or dangerous people coming. Um, the spirit of this celebration nowadays is actually uh, mostly about um, family gathering. So we value everything that is round that reminds us of uh, the moon, of the full moon. And uh, when something is very round, it's also a, a sign of ab abundance. Uh, and the really traditionally the Chinese tables are round, uh, the family gathers, gathers around it, there are lots of dishes and uh, everybody can, uh, has enough to, to eat. Um, the uh, moon cakes that are traditional for this festival, actually we find the first mentions of them in the Southern Song dynasty. Southern Song, that's 960 uh, until 1279, so roughly 700 to 1000 years ago. That's when the moon cakes were invented, um, mostly in the shape of a moon, uh, so round, uh, but they could um, also, uh, what they would also do um, nowadays is we, uh, there is an egg yolk uh, placed inside the moon cake uh, so that uh, the color of the yolk will um, and the shape will remind you of of the moon. The moon cakes in Taiwan uh, they come actually in uh, two kinds of styles. This is actually the Taiwanese style with um, layered uh, um, say, uh, on the outside, um, whether white made with um, different kinds of beans. And there is a Cantonese um, moon cake uh, which has a thinner uh, paste on the outside, uh, a thinner crust on the outside, uh, and on, on the inside is um, 
more concentrate, more more heavy. You see, it's also why it's a bit uh, smaller. Uh, so, but in both cases, what is important to know is that uh, there are um, quite um, uh, a lot of calories in uh, each of these cakes. Uh, some of them can be um, uh, sweet or uh, or salty. Some cakes are made with um, uh, with meat. Uh, and uh, yolks, uh, so you you find all kinds of different tastes, but usually they use very traditional Chinese ingredients to uh, to make. Uh, and now let's. Uh, uh, what else can we can we say about this? Um, one second. I don't want to, to forget anything else. and and oh another uh, I also want to talk about the significance of um, of the moon uh, the moon is not just there to um, uh, for the calendar uh, to indicate when is the right time for the um, for this uh, festival to happen, the moon actually um, has uh, actually there are, there are many symbols that are on the moon. Uh, one of them is that there is a, a beautiful lady uh, who drank an elixir, kind of a drug, and then she she was spirited away and uh, now lives in a palace on uh, on the moon. Uh, when you look at the shape of the moon, is, um, the Chinese have found that they, are, that they look a bit like uh, many rabbits in the moon. Um, and um, in the Tang Dynasty, the, uh, the moon is used in uh, lots of um, uh, poems. If you read Li Bai or Du Fu, you will see that uh, in uh, almost half of the poems they write, there is a mention of, of the moon. Uh, definitely the, well, some of his uh, most famous ones uh, are, um, um, uh, are about the moon, the reflection that they see uh, of the moon, they think, oh, is this frost? And uh, they, they realize maybe it's just the moon and uh, they, at the end this, uh, he's thinking about uh, his hometown. Uh, and uh, uh, so a kind of uh, also a feeling of separation. and. Um, the moon brings then people together uh, on this festival, but also in um, in spirit. Um, so for the for separated lovers uh, to look at the moon uh, on uh, on a full moon, uh, they feel close uh, together because uh, both are watching at the same uh, object at the same time. So this. Um, the, the mere thought of uh, knowing that uh, your uh, your love is also watching the moon when you are watching it uh, brings a connection between you and uh, her, you and him, and uh, therefore uh, it, for some people this brings solace. In uh, one of uh, Dufu, one of Dufu's um, uh, poems, actually he does not find the solace. He is a, a bit more an original poet, and so he takes uh, the uh, the counter step to to this and uh, says, "No, no, actually, uh, I'm separated uh, from my wife because it's um, this, this Lushan rebellion. I wish I were we were both in Chang'an, uh, but um, we are separated and." Uh, Looking at the moon uh, does not bring much uh, solace, uh, even though I, I know my wife is probably also watching the moon, but I feel the distance from my from my kids. So, uh, right, but Dufu is uh, is always more original in uh, in this sense. Uh, so let's uh, go back to the to the moon cakes. Uh, maybe they will bring us uh, a solace from uh, being uh, separated from, uh, from our, of our loved ones. And actually many poets uh, were uh, mandarins, so people in, um, uh, in this high society, uh, close to the court, and the emperor would send them away to administer different regions. 
uh, which is uh, one of the reasons why they were using this moon as a connection to, to their loved ones and, the, and often were thinking of separation from, um, from them. Um, what I can also add about these Taiwanese um, mooncakes, of course they are uh, a much more recent invention. Uh, I mentioned the uh, Song Dynasty, that's for mooncakes in general, but uh, I think you, it will be very difficult to find a, a recipe that dates back from uh, to the Song Dynasty. Most of these traditions have been um, uh, lost. Uh, also because there were different uh, other dynasties in the meantime. The uh, Taiwanese mooncakes, we can trace them uh, to Feng Yuan, a um, town close to uh, Taichung, uh, shortly after the Second World War, after Kuomintang came to, to Taiwan. Uh, they were some of the first to, to make um, mooncakes. And uh, most of the so the most of the Taiwanese traditional mooncakes uh, are from the 50s, 60s, and uh, they are based on um, ludo, these green beans. And uh, since they are quite light, uh, it's better to pair them with um, uh, lighter tasting uh, tea, maybe like a high mountain oolong, whereas the more concentrated um, taste of uh, Cantonese style mooncakes is more suitable for uh, for poor actually, uh, uh, a nice uh, a little bit mid-aged uh, raw poor could be quite good. Let's, um, let's have some tea. I'm still going to make uh, tea with the Gaiwan I quite recommend. This time I'm using a Gaiwan from my selection. This, uh, uh, this shape, uh, you can find it. I like it uh, because even when it's filled quite high, it, uh, the, the rim is quite open and um, you will not burn your, uh, your fingers when you are holding it. I, will, I shall demonstrate it very soon. Let's also have some oolong leaves. Okay. Always preheat the guy one first. Let's do this to preheat the lid a little bit faster. Uh -huh. Quite good. And now let's make the tea leaves dance. I've posted another video, a short video on uh, YouTube this week. I was uh, in the hills uh, in the North Taiwan, uh, close to Tuchang, and uh, we had a great time drinking tea outdoors. And I showed how to brew this high mountain oolong. So it's the same high mountain oolong as um, Last week, my Qingxing -Qing Oolong from uh, Ali Shan. And now we just simply have to wait. Uh, we have let really the leaves um, uh, turn on themselves. This will help them uh, unfurl. Uh, we gave them a little additional push uh, so that they would continue to, unf to open up and unfurl and uh, yeah, let's cut a little piece of this mooncake So 
So here you can see the typical inside, a bit grainy, uh, uh, pasty of, uh, the, um, of this Taiwanese style mooncake. Let me also show you how it would look like in this Cantonese style mooncake. Here a very different kind of um, uh, paste, very uh, much darker. Uh, and let's cut a small piece. But of course, then the lighter aromas are a better fit for high mountain oolong than the Cantonese style. Leaves have not completely opened up. Did I wait a little bit too, uh, too little time to get the water to a full boil? Uh, maybe uh, always the stress of uh, performing on the brew in front of a camera makes that uh, sometimes you hear you the sound of the machine uh, of the um, electric um, in. Uh, induction heater you s mistake the heat of the, uh, the sound of the fan for the boiling of the water uh, let's give it a few more minutes and uh, okay Okay, the, term, the color still came out good enough. Here you go. Cheers. Mm. Okay, thank you very much for watching this um, class about uh, the Moon Festival. I hope you enjoyed it, uh, learning about uh, the different styles of mooncakes. And uh, now that uh, we are drinking tea, uh, it also hit me that uh, I should um, extend my condolences to the uh, citizens of the Commonwealth uh, and uh, of the uh, to the British people who have maintained the tea traditions uh, for the last 70 years thanks to uh, Queen Elizabeth II. Thank you very much for her service and all the tea parties she threw around during her reign. May she have many more tea parties in uh, the uh, Kingdom of Heaven where she will be reigning I'm sure. Thank you very much for watching and see you next week for another tea class.